Hey, it's me, Beanie, and this is my funny little character. Uh, don't question it too much, it's just here now. And I also like to welcome everyone to the new year, even if I'm a bit late to the punch. And with that comes all kinds of new beginnings, but more specifically, the end. Even specifically, uh, the end of the copyright for the Disney animated short Steamboat Willie, putting it in the public domain, as I'm sure you know, given literally everyone has jumped on this bandwagon. Myself included. And I'm gonna be speed modeling Steamboat w Willy? M M Mickey Mouse? So this will be more straight to the point compared to the last few vids, kind of an experiment, honestly. Hopefully an entertaining one, but I've also got the next video in progress. But in the meantime, I'm doing this. Getting a reference for this is incredibly straightforward. We have the Steamboat Willy short, we have the print screen button, easy peasy. And that's all I'm going with. Every reference collected is a different angle screenshot from the original 1928 short, which as I remind you, is in the public domain. I am making the public domain Mickey Mouse from the 1928 short Steamboat Willy. Nothing else. Especially not the current, yet to be determined if public domain extends to this mouse mouse. Please don't sue me. And to start off here, Michael Mouse needs to be blocked out, and to do that I have to look at the shapes of his character. Every character is generally, to some extent, made up of primitive shapes, that being your circles and your squares and... others. Mickey's got a big potbelly sphere, so there's one, and you can kind of start seeing them from there. The legs of his pants are thick cylinders, his legs and his pants are thin cylinders, ears are circles, nose is a sphere, etc. I'm sure you're comfortably familiar with the silhouette of this mouse at this point, so I don't need to break it down for you. That being said, here's a breakdown of his shapes. As easy as it would be, I'm not going to assemble them immediately with these kind of primitives since it'd have some seams and not the good for texturing kind. See my little company videos if you don't get that reference. Instead, I'm piecing together the parts with a tried and true classic, subdivided cube extruded into the shape of a mouse. Subdivided meaning it's higher detail and smoother, but we can still alter it at its original blocky form, so our lives are much easier. I'm gonna be building Mickey from the neck down, because I can get away with assembling the head separately without much issue, and it's also just the easiest part to start off with. He's a cartoon character, so he needs to be redrawn every frame, meaning he's fairly simple in terms of design, since redrawing an overly complicated character can result in inconsistent animation and generally a very sore wrist. Especially in 1928. Without going into every little movement I make here, the process goes essentially as follows. Cut a hole in the top of the subdivided block and make two pant legs out the bottom. Pull out some actual legs and extrude some booties out for our mouse. Pull the shape upwards from the pants and pull out some arms from each side to make up Mickey's torso and pull out the ends of those arms to make up some hands and fingers. Easy as pie. Slap some buttons on the pants for good measure. I also used a bezier curve to make up the tail, which is basically just a tube made up of two ends with the in-between parts calculated with math that I definitely don't know enough about. But it works, and that's all we need to know. When we go onto the head, some subdivided cubes are tweaked to make up the eyes, nose, and ears, and I could have gotten away with just using spheres for these, but I think that using the cubes results in a much more even flow of polygon faces, which are those little squares you see on some of the surfaces where I haven't enabled smooth shading yet. Making Mickey's head was deceivingly difficult, to the point that I straight up scrapped the head and had to redo it, and I got a little worried that I actually would have to put in some effort and mark out the faces manually, but thankfully I was able to get by using my subdivided shapes. A good thing too, since that means the edge flow is fairly alright here too. When texturing a model, you generally have to cut a seam and flatten the model out from that point, so you can go ahead and paint over it, but in this case I was intending to wholly just go with a simple colour palette pulled from the short itself, and move each section of the model's texture space to be in those sections. This worked for the body, but without going back and marking out a different flow of faces, I couldn't really do it this way with the head. Thus, I was forced to UV unwrap the head and make a texture for it. This program is Substance Painter. If you haven't seen my other videos, usually it's a lot more impressive than this, but I need a color and a bit of Mickey, and it works somewhat well for what we're doing. After that, I just finished it off with the incredibly tall Steamboat Captain hat that Mickey wears in the iconic intro to the short, and colored it in with the same palette textures I use for the rest of the body. Rigging is the same old story. I have a pre-built skeleton provided to me by the Rigify Blender add-on, and I strip away anything I don't need and add in some new bones where I do, like the eyes and the ears. Parts that are more cohesively one-sold object work well for automatic rigging, like the torso and hands. As for the rest of it, when pieces intersect or slot into each other that aren't fused at their edges, it can play a bit rough with the automatic methods, and usually results in a whole lot of clipping and inconsistency when you start moving it around. So, for everything else, I selected parts of the mesh and assigned them to their corresponding bones, and now our iconic Mickey Mouse of the 1928 short Steamboat Willie has the power of joints. 
like, like for moving. To get fancy with it, Blender's grease pencil features let me place a drawn on outline to it, even in 3D, and even though this thing still admittedly looks a little like an off-brand figurine, it turned out better than I expected considering it took me like an hour 50 to do it. Steamboat Willie's Mickey Mouse, now available in all three dimensions. You know, not counting 4D. Haven't watched that tutorial yet. Either way, hopefully you liked it, even if you just skipped through, which, like, I don't think this will be that long, but I won't judge, I just appreciate y'all checking it out. And in other news, I actually played Ultra Kill for the first time recently, so that'll be this video's follow-up. And if you have any suggestions, there's a lot of characters in there to pick from. Ideally, that'll come out quicker than the last Lethal Company video it took to get out there, but, uh, only time will tell. Thanks again, everyone.